I told you that according to psychological research, there's a specific mindset that more successful people tend to have. Now, before I actually go into what this mindset is, there's actually a quiz you can take. It's 10 minutes long. It's free to get the non-detailed version of your result on psychology today. I'm going to pin that in a comment because if you want to know whether you have this actual mindset before I go into what it is, I highly recommend you take that quiz beforehand because once I tell you what it is, it's probably going to affect your results. So if you wanna see where you rank on this test, on this mindset, before we actually get into what the mindset is, pause this video here, go take that test 10 minutes long. Like I said, it's free, pretty easy to take and then come back to this video. And if you feel like it, share your score with the rest of us in the comments. I'm actually gonna be sharing my score in a moment. And also, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm a postdoctoral therapist and author in the state of Washington. Also, something very exciting, I'm actually doing my very first giveaway. I know sometimes people talk about wanting to get a copy of my novel or not being able to because of difficulties with shipping to their country or because they can't afford to right now. And I completely understand that. So this holiday season in December, I haven't set a date yet, but I will soon. I'm going to give away a copy of my novel, The Curse in Their Veins, with an autograph and also a personalized message. And so here's what you can do if you want to participate in the giveaway. The requirements are you screenshot either the book cover or the synopsis, you know, something from the Amazon page of the book cover. There will also be a link to that in the description box. So just screenshot something from that page about the book and post it to either TikTok or Instagram or Facebook Book, whatever you have where it's a public page that I can see it. If it's TikTok, you can actually please tag me. And if it's not TikTok, please put it in the comments here because I only have YouTube and TikTok at this point. So whatever social media page it's on, I just need to be able to see it basically. And on top of the screenshot, just tell me a little bit about why you want a copy of the novel. You know, why it speaks to you, why it's something that's important to you. If it is on TikTok, make sure to tag me at psychology with Dr. Anna. And if it's not, again, just put it here in the comments. I'm gonna be deciding on one person that gets a free copy of the book with a signature and a message. It's not based on how many followers you have. It's really not based on anything except what you write in the post itself, why this is important to you. So I'll be announcing the winner of the giveaway then in like late December, and I'm going to just reach out to the winner, ask them for their shipping information, and send that signed copy. All right, let's get into the topic of today's video, which is the mindset that successful people tend to have. In cognitive psychology, there's something called attribution theory. An attribution is basically an explanation that we have for something when it rains outside. It's our explanation for why it's raining outside. It's the why of things. So attribution theory is about how we explain the why of good or bad outcomes in our life. Turns out, according to attribution theory, we attribute things according to three categories. Locus of control, stability, and controllability. So let me explain what each of these are. Locus of control can be either internal or external. Internal locus of control simply means something coming from inside you, something about you. External locus of control means something that is not coming from inside you, something that is externally caused. So let's take the example that uh, your girlfriend Janice just broke up with you. An internal locus of control would be if you were to say, there must be something wrong with me. Janice probably thinks I'm not good enough for her because I don't make enough money. An external locus of control instead would be, Janice was a very critical person. She would have criticized me no matter what I do. So that's the first category, locus of control. The second one is stability. Do you perceive that the cause of this outcome is stable across time, it's here to stay, it's permanent, or is it something that could change in the future? For instance, a high amount of stability would be to say, Janice dumped me because I'm lazy. I always have been, always will be, nothing I can do to change it. Whereas low stability would be saying, Janice dumped me because I'm in between jobs right now, something that's going to change very soon in the future. And now the third concept is controllability. This is how within your control something is or not. So high controllability is saying, I could have worked harder to find a job these past six months, but I didn't. It was something that was within my control, but I didn't take those steps. Whereas low controllability would be to say, it's not my fault that no one's hiring right now. It's impossible to get a job anywhere with the layoffs taking place. Now, here's the thing. Regardless of which of these outlooks is objectively true, there is one specific type 
of outlook on why things happen to you that's associated with greater success. Successful people do the following. When they succeed at something, they attribute those successes to controllable, internal, stable factors. For instance, I passed that exam because I studied for it. It's controllable because you can control how much you study. It's internal because the studying came from within you, not from external factors like how hard the test was. And it's stable because you can continue to study in the future. And when they fail at something, successful people attribute those failures to controllable, internal, unstable factors. For example, I didn't study hard enough on this test. It's controllable, you could have studied more. It's internal, you're taking responsibility for the fact that you could have done something internally different, but it is unstable, meaning it is not something you're doomed to forever. You're not saying it's always gonna be this way. You can change it up and study differently next time. Notice that in both failures and successes, chronically successful people take responsibility. They don't employ something called the fundamental attribution error, which is when you assume that when somebody else does something wrong, it's because of a character fault, but when you do something wrong, it's because of external circumstances. People who use the fundamental attribution error are the ones to say, say, um, yeah, this person showed up late to the meeting because they're a lazy, disrespectful worker, but when they're late because they had to go get Starbucks first, they say, it's not my fault, there was traffic. Why is it so important for us to take responsibility for the things that happen in our lives? Well, there's now a very large body of research to suggest that people with an internal locus of control have healthier lifestyles, they make healthier decisions around diet and exercise, they have lower rates of anxiety and stress, they save money for rainy days, Days, they spend more time cognitively stimulating their kids, they're more resilient at work following health shocks, they look harder for jobs when unemployed, they bounce back from some types of losses in life, they experience more career success, and they do better academically. Hi Candy, you have an internal locus of control? If you believe that nothing you can do will change your outcomes, it's easier to get trapped in a spiral of powerless, hopelessness, and bitterness. Feeling like, woe is me, the world is against me, there's nothing I can do to change my circumstances. You won't even try to pull yourself out of whatever you're going through, and then you'll really be down to just luck. If, on the other hand, you believe that you have the power to change your circumstances, you might just find out that you're right. But if you never try, if you don't even believe it's possible, it probably won't happen. Why shouldn't you believe that things are uncontrollable and stable, even if you have an internal locus of control though? There's a distinction between controllability and locus of control. And oftentimes the things that are within our control are internal locus of control, like our effort level. But not always. Sometimes there are things about us that seem to be outside of our control. And sometimes there are things about the environment that actually maybe we can control. For example, maybe you have a relatively fixed skill set that is internal and yet it's somewhat out of your control because it's just, you know, whatever you're born with, for instance. But it's not good to tell yourself that there's something about you, that's something within you that's stable, that's outside of your control. And let me explain why. I remember it like it was last week. It was like day one of grad school and one of my professors was talking about her research into this exact topic into what happens when you tell kids, good job, you're so smart when they do well on a test versus what happens when you tell them you put in such great effort. When you tell a child something like you're so above average at intelligence, you're so good at math, you're basically saying this is an internal locus of control, but it's outside of your controllability and it's something stable across time. Instead, if your kid comes home with an A in math and you say, wow, you must have worked really hard on that. I'm so proud of you for giving that test your all. You're saying there's something that you did, it's internal, it's within your control, but it's not stable across time. It's something that you can decide whether or not you want to continue doing. It can really help children reframe success. Instead of thinking, oh, there's something just about me that I don't have to work so hard for, it makes me special and it's stable. It's not something I can control. You can imagine how that would make things more challenging when they're successful or when they fail at things. When they're successful, they could kind of have an ego high. They could get a little bit inflated in terms of self-esteem and when they fail, they could feel like they've lost something that's integral to their identity, which is not good. You want kids and adults to focus on doing the best that they can with what they have, but not thinking that there's something fixed, meaning uncontrollable and internal and stable, 
setting them up for either success or failure. If they think that it's uncontrollable, even if they think the success is coming from within them, they will feel helpless once they finally fail at something. And failure is inevitable. It's not a matter of if, it's when. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an explanation into what are the benefits of having this sort of mindset. And now I'm actually going to tell you my own score that I got on that test from the beginning. I scored a mixed attribution style, which means sometimes I attribute success to internal factors, other times to external factors. This is simply my worldview. I hold a very dialectical worldview where I do think that oftentimes there are more than one sides to the story. You know, I think sometimes things happen this way, sometimes they happen the other way. There's no point really painting it with one brush stroke because there's so much heterogeneity in any topic we're talking about. And when we're talking about success in particular, I do think that, again, there is a bit of variation. Some people become successful because of luck. Some people become successful because of hard work. I happen to think that most people become successful through a mix of the two to some degree due to a combination of luck and hard work and maybe some special skill. But according to attribution theory, it would behoove me to lean more towards an internal locus of control to take more credit for the outcomes in my life. And remember, if the research says this is what's associated with greater success, does it really matter what's true? You know, like I said, that's the way I see the world. That's my worldview. But personally, I'd rather be successful than right. So just something to consider if you also scored that you have a mixed attribution style or even an attribution style that's not so helpful. Does it matter what is true? Would you rather believe what is true that's putting you at a disservice or would you rather believe what is going to set you up for success? Now, I also want to touch on some other components of a healthy mindset that successful people have. There's one theory within cognitive psychology called the acquired needs theory, which basically says that a person does things because of one of three reasons, achievement, power, and affiliation. Achievement are the people who work hard because they want to be successful at something. They do have a concrete goal and they want to reach it. Like for instance, if I were to say, I want to sell a thousand copies of my book this month so that I can pay my bills. That would be an achievement focus. Power focus are the people who want to be successful so that they can get the compliance of those around them. So for instance, I want to become a New York Times bestseller because then people will respect me. And affiliation are the people who are aiming for something because they want to be liked and accepted in a group. For example, I want to be in Reese Witherspoon's book club because then a lot of people will approve of me and people will like me and they'll like my book. Now, although this acquire needs theory doesn't always explicitly say one is better than the other, I do personally have an opinion on this. I am very much an achievement-oriented person. When it comes to career successes, I really just see it as a means to an end, a means to paying my bills, a means to accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish, like freedom and comfort and health, uh, education for my children. And people with an achievement-oriented lens often set very achievable yet challenging goals. They don't go into things that are way, way too easy for them, and they also don't go into things that they have no shot at winning because either of those things are not a good fit for them. It's good to find that middle ground. People with an achievement focus build a lot of self-efficacy, meaning they feel like they can accomplish the things that they set out to do because, again, they set realistic goals and they see them through. They want to feel competent, and they don't focus so much on status and approval, things that in my opinion, are more outside of your control. You can't control, no matter what you do, whether other people are going to like you or whether other people are going to bow down to you. The only thing you can control is your own behavior. People with an achievement lens are also less sensitive when it comes to criticism because they just want to improve rather than preserve their self-esteem. So actually, an interesting example about this. Recently, I posted on my community page asking you guys what I could do better on this channel. Because every like, I don't know, eight months or so, I just wanna know what could I do to elevate this channel, to make it more professional, more palatable to people. And I was kind of surprised that some people were saying like, oh, don't put yourself down. I love your channel the way that it is. Because from my perspective, I wasn't putting myself down. I was just asking for feedback. And that's a piece of feedback that I've actually received from supervisors in the past was that I am open to feedback. And the reason for that is because I value knowing what I can do better so that I can achieve my goals 
over being placated in terms of my self-esteem. In my opinion, an achievement focus is healthier because like I said, again, you cannot control whether other people are going to like you. And a lot of people who crave power go on to abuse that power. So I think achievement is a good thing to focus on. There's also a theory in cognitive psychology called achievement goal theory. And this is when a person pursues success either based on ego or because they want to do well on a task. And this seems to fit in really well with what I was just talking about. Within achievement goal theory, you can either be ego oriented, meaning you only care about defeating others, you just wanna win, or you can be task oriented, meaning you want to accomplish a task to the best of your ability. You're not comparing yourself with others, you're comparing yourself with yourself. For instance, I want to get an A plus on this test so that I can do better than Aisha versus I want to do my very best on this test so that I can learn something that will help me in med school. One is healthier than the other. There's also something called self-determination theory, which basically says that humans need autonomy, competence, and relatedness in order to feel intrinsically motivated at something. Intrinsic motivation is super important. It means the reasons you are doing something come from within you. They come from something driving you inside that's completely not related to what's going on outside of you. It's not about a punishment. It's not about a reward. It's not about someone else forcing you to do something. It's something that you are choosing to do. So what are these three components that you need in order to feel intrinsically motivated to do something? Autonomy is basically you need to feel like you're making your own decisions. If you're working at a job because no one else would hire you anywhere else, you might feel like you have no choice in the matter, so you're just dragging your feet the whole time. That would be a situation where you have no intrinsic motivation to do something because you feel like you didn't have any autonomy in this choice. Competence is pretty straightforward. It's when you feel like you're capable of making successful outcomes for yourself. So if you also feel like you're not very good at this job that you kind of feel like you got forced into, you're not going to feel very motivated to do your work tasks because every time you do them, it makes you feel incompetent. Relatedness is how satisfied you are with your place in society. So if you feel like you're not respected at your job, if you're kind of at the bottom of the food chain at your workplace where everyone just steps over you. Again, you're not gonna feel motivated intrinsically to do your work tasks because every time you try to, you feel like shit about yourself. And the last theory that I think is important for us to discuss with regards to having a healthy mindset towards success is self-efficacy theory. Self-efficacy theory basically just says that people who are successful believe that they will succeed at things. I have a great deal of self-efficacy. You know, not all aspects of my self-esteem might always be 100%, but I have a very strong belief in my ability to accomplish the things I set out to do. And I did have a video on this a while back where I talk about some ways to build self-efficacy. So check that out if you're interested more specifically. Let's put it all together. What is the mindset of someone who is more likely to be successful in life? This is a person who attributes their failures to controllable, internal, unstable factors, who says, I failed at this because of something that I did that I can change, who attributes their successes to controllable, internal, stable factors, who says, I succeeded at this beca because there's something about me that I can continue to do. This is a successful person who cares about achieving their goals, doesn't care so much about power or being liked or having a leg up over someone else, who just wants to do well on the task at hand rather than getting bothered with where everyone else is in their own journeys, who feels intrinsically motivated to reach their goals, who feels like they have a high degree of autonomy at work, a high sense of competence, and satisfaction with their place in the world. The reason I'm telling you this is because I've noticed a trend among my generation and younger generations of viewing the world through this lens of everything that happens is outside of my control due to external factors. And these are things that are not going to change in the foreseeable future. And I understand why people see things this way. There's a lot more awareness these days on recognizing power structures and acknowledging resource disparities. But regardless of how unfair and terrible the world is out there and how few of your circumstances are actually your fault. It is the opposite attitude that might help you get out of that situation. Because like I said, if you believe that there is nothing you can do to actually set yourself up for success, you're probably not going to even try and then you're not even giving yourself a shot. I'm not saying that if you have this mindset, suddenly you're going to be super successful. 
but you might. You have a bigger chance of succeeding if you try. You know, remember self-efficacy theory. The people that succeed the most are the people that think they can do it. And remember what I asked earlier. Does it really matter what's true or not? Would you rather be successful? or right. Personally, I know what I'd choose. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. Don't forget to participate in the giveaway if you would like a signed copy of the book. Look forward to hearing your thoughts on today's topic and I'll see you soon.